Well, hey there, it's your old pal Keith from wavetables.lol, that's wavetables.lol, uh, where you'll find my gigantic collection of wavetables and waveforms from modern wavetable synthesizers, including our pal Korg ModWave native that I'm using today. Um, and what I want to talk about today is uh, a new and kind of interesting waveform that I've just added to the collection. Um, this waveform that we are looking at, hold on here. Um, this waveform we're looking at is uh, called a, a Morlet wavelet. And a uh, Morlet wavelet is, uh, let's find a better example, turn off our shifty shifty stuff. Um, a Morlet wavelet uh, is this kind of complex sinusoidal function that's then windowed by a Gaussian envelope. And so typically they look something like this. Uh, let's turn down channel one, shall we? I don't know if that's loud enough for you to hear. It has a very nasal property like that, um, but sounds very interesting, I think, when you sweep it. Now, the, um, what is, what is a, a wavelet? Uh, wavelets are these, um, kind of funky shapes like you see here. They're used in, in signal processing, uh, certain types of, you know, audio processing. Uh, you can do, uh, kind of frequency binning like you'd sort of do in the FFT. Uh, they can be used in image processing in, in two dimensional space, et cetera, et cetera. They have all sorts of, uh, applications, but like any function, um, any time varying function that we could plot, um, or any time varying function, um, right. Uh, that what I, I, that, that, I just kind of blew that. Um, now any, any time varying function that, that we can plot, we could, we could audioize, right. By, you know, putting it into a wavetable. Um, and so I think these are kind of interesting. Um, tip of the hat to Mark Pagat. Uh, I hope I'm not butchering your name, Mark, um, whose YouTube channel is um, South Shore Sonics, I think. I'll link to it in the description. Um, who uh, asked me a question like if I had experimented with these functions for creating waveforms yet. And I said, well, uh, no, I hadn't. Um, but I finally got around to doing it. And they're kind of interesting. I've created uh, 40 wavetables based on this function. Um, and, uh, one thing that I think is sort of interesting about these is you'll note that we're not, we're, we're not actually, um, modulating our filter here. Like what we're hearing is just this, this transition where the frequency of the wavelet is changing. And also, uh, this factor called sigma, which which is the the percent of the uh, waveform essentially that's windowed using that that Gaussian envelope, and um, I can see why certain wavetable synthesis would be very interested in these because um, they have this this kind of this resonant character. You know, whenever you see these kind of wibbles like this inside of a waveform, and then they're and, and, you know, maybe they're enveloped or maybe they're not, you're going to hear like a resonance. And some uh, synthesis prefer to explore wavetables, um, you know, basically on their own uh, without any filtering. And so I can see why these would be interesting because it, it does sound like there's some sort of complex filter going on. And then there's and then there, there's this resonant shift that's happening as well. Um, and so I thought these were pretty interesting. And here's a very simple patch, right? It's just a one layer patch where we're just, we're just morphing through that, that wave table. And here's, here's a slightly different variation, right? The, um, the starting frequency is, is only like a quarter of a Hertz. And then the ending frequency looks like it's, it's six. And then there's a very narrow window at the end. Uh, in this one, there's a less narrow window at the end and the, um, Let's see, the frequency is going from one to, to 10 up here. And so you, this one sounds very, 
very resonant and nasal as it gets up here. So th these are, you know, interesting kind of uh, new, um, I would call them sort of a basic synthesis wave. Let's just go back to a single one. And we'll just whip through some of these, some of these wavetable variations. Uh, let's see, I don't really, I'm going to go up here a little higher, I think. All right, so that's that one. And then there's lots of different variations on these. Um, let's, let's see. And when you import these, by the way, into uh, ModWave, they will show up in a new collection that's called KRC Morlet, if I remember correctly. Yes, KRC Morlet. Um, and there's a bunch of different variations. So we've got these, these, these basic Morlet ones. There's 40 in total here. Um, and here's one where we went with to an even higher frequency. And of course you can, you could, you could, uh, move through these. Well, you don't have to move through them at all if you don't want to. Um, but you can move through these in both directions and they kind of give a different effect, right? That's pretty nifty. And then here's one. Where it's, it doesn't really have that resonant character because the, the frequencies are so low. But this would be a nice starting place for all sorts of different patches. Uh, here's one where we, again, go... Ah, the frequency here is fixed, but you'll see that we, we change that Gaussian window. So that's a completely different effect. And um, it occurs to me seeing this one and hearing it, there are some waveforms in KRC Mathways Volume 1 that are somewhat similar to this, but using some different functions. And then I like these ones a lot. This, I think, is very useful in both directions. It's got that, that's, that's a cool sweep. And it gets pretty outrageous there at the, at the upper end. So, you know, you wouldn't, you don't necessarily have to go all the way there now, do you? And you don't even have to sweep it at all, of course. You could just pick. Um, they're just kind of interesting. They're, they are, uh, I guess you'd call that a very electronic sort of sound, right? Uh, let's, let's see, let's go back to sweeping through these things. Kind of interesting transitions that happen in the different ones. Here's one where we're just, we're very narrow. And we're subtly changing the center frequency of that waveform. Now we start to get a little bit more into like effect territory. Like I'm playing very low on the keyboard. <laughs> It does occur to me that you might, I don't know, these might be candidates for like FMing into, you know, wub steppy kind of growls. That might be a thing you could do with them. <laughs> pretty, pretty nifty. Let's see, how many more of these do we have? Oh, let's go through the rest of these Morlet wave tables real quick. Oops, come a little back. Interesting. And um, another thing, these respond really well to things like the stretch parameter in ModWave, which is essentially doing a phase shift on this. They're kind of neat. All right, and then let's see, we've got, we also got this one. This one might be very useful. You know, and of course we don't have to, we don't have to keep that really slow We could change our OS envelope to... All right, and these sound really interesting right when you layer them. So, you know, here's, here's this guy, and then here's this one.
very cool. And again, we don't, we're not even playing with our filter yet. Um, this might sound good with like the, the MS-20 style filter on it. And of course you could enhance its resonance by using the resonance in the filter. Those are pretty cool. Something like that, right? Cool. Uh, let's see. Is there another one that's in the basic Morlet? No. Uh, now, having done that, I did go and uh, do some other variations. Because, of course, I was like, all right, how could I get... Um, how could I do a version of these that actually have more harmonics? Uh, because that seems like that would be an interesting thing to do. So I did some variations where I took the function and didn't use it uh, purely as described. But what I did is I identified the, um, the peaks in the, uh, that sinusoidal function. And instead of letting them be sin sinusoidal, like curvy, uh, I just drew straight lines through them. And so that gives us these. These tri twos, so they're called TRI2. Um, I was trying to make things more triangular. Um, you would probably look at these and go, well, really, they're more sawtoothy, aren't they? And they are. But like, now these are kind of wicked. Interesting stuff. And like, good for, you could use these in, you know, any sort of patch that would have a square wave or a sawtooth wave in it as just an alternative, right? And here's one that's very effecty. It goes to a very high frequency and very narrow. Or, of course, we could go the opposite way. That's kind of nifty. And, of course, if you, go, if you go very high on some of these, you know, where you're going to move out of the audio range at the upper end of this, and they'll sort of cut off. See, there's really nothing happening there until we get that frequency down to where it makes sense. But these, these waveforms down at the end, these are super useful, I think, on their own. And we could just modulate them a tiny amount. Interesting. All right, let's do, let's look at more of these. You know, this, th this guy's just screaming to be filtered, right? Okay, that's pretty fun. Uh, oh, and then there's some, actually, I didn't do this with the uh, sinusoidal ones, but it, it, um, it, it occurred to me that rather than just, you know, doing like a linear uh, morph from uh, one sigma value, like wide to, to narrow uh, at different ends, you could cycle through like sinusoidally here, you'll see that I'm going from the the wide sigma to the narrow sigma, and this happens a couple times over the course of the wavetable. And it's it's maybe somewhat useful. Kinda neat. It wasn't as interesting and useful as I thought it might be, so I just did, did a few that are like that. Anyway, there's a lot of new novel synthesis material in here for you to work with. Um, there is another variation. Uh, before I came up with the let's draw a straight line between the, um, uh, the peaks in the sinusoid, I did do another version where, let's see, these are called this, the tri, not tri two. These are the triangular is what that means. Where what I did is I rectified the waveform now, get your, get your mind out of my butt. Um, rectified just means we took the, the positive uh, portion of the waveform in order to make these peaks, right, that are here. And so these would, would sound more triangular and then did another function to kind of sharpen these. And so these, um, these have their own sound. But again, they morph. 
They morph in the same way that the other uh, more like wavetables morph, which is kind of fun. Okay, so, well, so those are those are morelets, um, and I think I'm just you know gonna shut up now. Um, you can go check these out; they're in KRC Math Waves uh, full collection, which gets you literally more than 140,000 wavetables. Uh, it uh, it's it's usually available for like 29 bucks, but it's often on special. Um, I will probably maybe put a discount code in the description. Um, or, you know, go get the free version, and periodically I email folks about promotions. Um, so anyway, have fun. I hope you enjoyed this exploration of Morlet wavelets. And, um, Mark, these are for you. I hope you enjoy them. Uh, have a great day. Uh, happy President's Day to all who observe, okay? Uh, take it easy. Ta-ta for now. <laughs>